First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity of presenting our work at this mini symposium in the International Conference of Mathematical Neuroscience. As Claudia said, I will introduce a clustering procedure for EEG data sets that aims at finding groups of EEG segments that have the same law. This work is a joint work with Antonio Galvez, Fernando Nashman, and Claudia Vargas done as a part of Neuromat project. We'll continue working with experimental protocol introduced by Duarte et al, where there were sequences of hand claps, either strong or weak and silent units generated by a stochastic chain. Hernandez et al analyzed these data sets and found out that they could effectively retrieve the context tree that characterizes the source. This means that they found a context tree that I'm showing here, which has eight leaves, where each of them represents a cluster. I'm going to explain it a little bit better later. Then, our goal is to identify classes of models used by the brain to encode the statistical regularity of the environment. And the question that we want to answer is if we can retrieve the statistical regularities of the stimuli sequences from the data recorded from the brain. So we are going to work with the context tree model in the quaternary case where we had a strong bit that was followed by a weak bit, then by a silent unit, and finally by another weak bit. The weak bits were eventually replaced by, fine, by silent units with probability epsilon, which is a, a small number. So, in this case, we want to know which information is encoded in the EEG data set. And if different information encoded in the EEG data set can result into the same context tree being retrieved. Let us discuss two conjectures about which information of the stimuli sequence may be encoded in the EEG data set. Then, the first conjecture is the one introduced by Hernandez et al, where the law of the EEG segment is a, a law is, is a function of the context of the corresponding context in the context in, in the sequence of stimuli. Then, if we have two different contexts that belong to the same context tree, the law of the EEG segments associated to each of them will be the same if alone and only if these contexts are the same. Then, for the quaternary case, as we showed previously, we had eight different laws that were represented by the leaves of the tree. Each of them was a cluster. So each cluster contained all the EEG segments recorded after the occurrence of the same context. Well, the second conjecture is that is based on the idea that the brain encodes data taking into account basic recurrent regularity. There are papers in the neurobiology literature that support the idea that the brain synchronizes with auditory rhythm and that uses the synchronization to make predictions. Then it is conceivable that the brain uses recurrent strong beat to encode information of the stimuli sequence. In this case, every four steps we have a strong beat. Two steps later, we have a weak beat. And in the other st steps, we have either a silent unit or a strong beat. We have a silent unit with probability epsilon and, strong, and a weak beat with probability 1 minus epsilon. This induces the following partition. We have four clusters. Each, each cluster is characterized by the position of the recurrent structure. So in this first case, the clusters are composed by the, the, the sequences that have on the last position a strong bit. The second cluster will be, the, will be characterized by the sequences that then in a random position following the strong bit. The third cluster is characterized by sequences that end in a recurrent silent unit. And finally, the last cluster is characterized by sequences that end in a random position following a consistent silent unit, a recurrent deterministic silent unit. 
So, in this case, each EEG segment law is a function of the cluster to which it belongs. And we have four clusters instead of, of, instead of having eight as, it, as we had in the first conjecture. Well, in this case, we retrieve the same context tree model from the EEG right data, but the clusters are different. In red, we are indicating those sequences that end in a strong bit. In blue, we are indicating the sequence that then is end in a random position following a strong bit. In brown, we indicate the sequences that end in a constituting, constituent silent unit. And finally, in green, we are indicating the sequences that end in a random position following a constituent silent unit. This conjecture doesn't follow conjecture one because for conjecture one, the sequences 0, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 0 would have different distribution. In this case, these two sequences have the same distribution because both of them end in a random position following a consequent, consequent silent unit. Now, our aim uh, is to determine if it is possible to retrieve a model from the EEG data that takes into account all considerations, all possible, part, all, all possible comp comparisons. Now we are going to propose a strategy to test all the possible comparisons. But at this point, it's important to acknowledge that our procedure has to consider uh, many comparisons and that the data that we have presents large inter-individual variability then it's possible that different participants encode in a different way the information of the sequence of the stimuli. We'll introduce a clustering partition based on um, the dissimilarity, based on a dissimilarity matrix constructed upon the projective goodness of test fit introduced by Cuesta Alberto. So the idea is that we are going to construct a dissimilarity matrix that then will be used for a, a hierarchical clustering, um, a hierarchical clustering uh, partition. But this dissimilarity matrix will be will, will aim to retain information of the low distribution of the different um, strings. So we have the following strings of free symbols. Uh, occurring in the set of stimuli. So we have these 12 possibilities. And we want to see then, for each of them, of these possibilities, we consider the corresponding EEG segments in these sets, YU. So we'll have 12 different YU sets, each of them for each of these um, strings of free symbols. Then we are going to generate at random a direction. In this case, it will be a Brownian bridge. And we are going to project these data sets that are functions into the direction, the random direction that we generated previously. And we're going to do this for all for the 12 data sets. Now, for each, for each string, we have the one dimensional data set, the univariate data set that contains the projections of the EEG segments. And we are going to compare all the sets YU by means of the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, the classical univariate Kolmogorov Smirnov test, which determines whether two tests, two sets have the same distribution. Then we have two different functional data sets projected in onto a random dimension. We obtain two different univariate data sets, which are the projections of these sets. And finally, we compare their distribution by means of the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. Once we have done this for all the, the possible comparisons, we'll construct a dissimilarity matrix that will have zero if we accept the null hypothesis. This means that we accept that both sets, of fun both sets have the same distribution. And one, if we reject that hypothesis. Due to stability reasons, 
we cannot do this procedure only once, so we will repeat it for several random directions. Then we'll obtain m different dissimilarity matrices that we're going to summarize them with the average. So this will be the final dissimilarity matrix that we are going to consider to proceed to clusterize the data according to a hierarchical cluster. Well, this procedure is what we call clustering the EEG data by log. Our aim would have was to compare the theoretical distribution of two sets of functions. Since this is unfeasible, what we do is use the projective method. So we project the data and compare the distribution of the projections. And we do this, do this several times. But what is important to highlight is that we are not considering distances between functions, but what we are trying to retrieve is the distances between the distribution of that functions. So we proceed to the simulation stat. What we're going to do now is to project on one hand, data using conjecture one. This means following the, this partition. And on the second, uh, and on the other hand, what we are going to do is to generate data according to conjecture two. This means following this partition. And we want to see if in each of these cases, we are able to retrieve the we are able to retrieve the model that generated the data. So we are going to simulate sequence of stimuli following a probabilistic context tree model. And then based upon that, we are going to simulate a stochastic sequence, a continuous stochastic sequence. Some of the data we are going to simulate it following conjecture one. This means that we'll have eight clusters and the other and there were the other sets of data that we're going to generate it following conjecture two. This means having four clusters. We're going to do this study, this study separately, no? So for the data, data generated having H loss, here we are showing what replicate of the simulation study. This means once we have generated the data according to this um, conjecture. And well, here we have the dendrogram. That, that we retrieve following the clustering by loss strategy. In this case, what we can see is that we have finally the partition into eight clusters. These clusters correspond to the, to the final leaves of this tree. That was the context tree that generated them. We can see that all the clusters are separated at the very beginning of the dendrogram. This means that these clusters are very easy to separate so that the strategy can easily retrieve the can, can easily retrieve the theoretical partition that we had generated well we uh, indicated clusters with a key color um, with a key color uh, um, way so we have that in in black we have all the singletons so each of them correspond to one cluster then in red we have the cluster that corresponds to the context that end in a strong bid. In green, we have the context that, that end in a, uh, in a um, weak bid following a strong bid, and so on with the purple and with the cyan. For the second case, we have the data generated with four losses. In this case, again, we can see that the four cluster structure is easily retrieved since the, the, the partition is done at the very beginning of the dendrogram at a very high, uh, high uh, at a very high height of the dendrogram. Again, we use a key color to identify the clusters. And in this case, what we can see is that, for instance, all the clusters that end in a random position following a um, following um, constituent silent unit are identified in red, as we can see here. So these are just two replicates, one of each uh, model. And what we can see is that it seems quite an, an easy task. Then we have done this for different sample size. 
are what and he so in this figure what we indicate is in red the number of times for different sample size the number of times that the theoretical partition has been retrieved and in blue the number of size for the second conjecture where the theoretical partition has been retrieved what we see is that as the sample size grows the procedure is able to identify the theoretical partition moreover if our sample size is greater than 700 this happens in more than 90 percent of the times well, now we are going to move to a small analysis of a real data set. So we are going to consider a subset of EEG data from Hernandez et al. recorded from three electrodes, then I show you the scalp, 11, 18, and 22, from the left three frontal region of the scalp. First of all, we did a pre-processing of the data and we trim out 10% of our dying observations following um, a criteria based on the depth. We, we trim the 10% of the 10 of the data that had that was um, that had smaller depth using Feynman and Muniz functional depth. And what we've done with the remaining data is that we average the signal recorded in these three electrodes that are situated here. Well for each participant, we retrieved a partition following the procedure that we suggested. Uh, the problem is that we have a very high inter-individual inter variability, so we cannot um, pull all the, all the data sets. So then we had to make a, clustering con a consensus clustering to merge all the results. We did a the aim of doing a consensus clustering for merging all the partition is to diminish the variability of the results and to improve the clustering cl quality. The idea is to combine the clusters obtained for each participant. So for each participant, what we do is we build a matrix indexed by the strings, assigning either a value 1 to pairs of strings that belong to the same cl cluster and 0 otherwise. The consensus dendrogram is obtained from the average of these matrices. Well, in this case, this is the dendrogram that we obtain. In this dendrogram, we also can see clearly that we have a four cluster structure. And the clusters that we have obtained are following. So we can see, for instance, that the second cluster is a cluster that the, the four, well, then we're again here. Well, this is the class that we obtain. So the partition that we are obtain is the following. We obtain a four cluster structure and which, which doesn't coincide exactly with the theoretical clustering structure that was the, the clusters were that were characterized by the position of the recurrence sequences of the recurrence, of the recurrent symbols. So which are the differences? Well, the differences are the one highlighted here. First of all, in this case, this partition has the strong bit in the second position, so it should belong to the third cluster. Moreover, the second cluster joins two clusters. In one half, we have the clusters that end in a random position following a, a following a constituent silent unit and in this case we have the clusters that end in a in a constituent um, in a constituent silent unit so the blue observations should go with should go in the first cluster so now the question is well is this cluster similar to a theoretical one so what we have done is to compute numerically the probability of finding a partition as close or closer to the proposed in co by conjecture two. That one, uh, the, the one that has been retrieved upon our data, under the new hypothesis that all the partitions were equally li likely to happen. So 
To compare the partitions, we use the adjusted Grand Index, that is a measure of agreement between two partitions of the same data set, and the estimated probability of being by chance, this disclosure being by chance, is less than 1%. Then, what we found out is that there is evidence that the partition that we had obtained is really similar to the part of the, to the theoretical partition supported by conjecture two. Thank you.